We talked about all the many devices, mobile devices, GIS is becoming more pervasive, ruggedized devices, smartphones, tablets, who knows what's next? I'd like to turn the program over at this point to my friend David Cardella, who's going to show us some amazing things. Thank you, David. Thanks, Dean. So we've seen ArcGIS run on several different mobile devices and several different mobile platforms. The ArcGIS application itself is customizable. It's configurable. It's built upon an API, a public API, that we make available to you so that you can customize and develop your own custom workflows. ArcGIS for Windows Mobile and ArcPad are excellent solutions for high accuracy data collection on ruggedized devices. We heard Jack talk earlier today about the explosion of smartphones and tablets and the effect that it's having on GIS and the demand for GIS uh, within the organization especially. We're seeing a um, significant trend in organizations integrating these devices, iPads, uh, Android devices, into their workplace in order to satisfy uh, this demand. So I'd like to concentrate um, the rest of my talk on the smartphone and tablet platform. And in order to show you some of my favorite productivity tools, I'm going to use uh, ArcGIS uh, running on, on the iPad. So um, the ArcGIS application uses intelligent maps. This is an intelligent map, and it was an intelligent web map, and it was authored in much the same way we saw Andres author his map this morning. And so this is showing data of uh, an oil field, and we've got subsurface geology. We've also got uh, sightings of sensitive species in the area as well. The first thing that you'll notice about the application, and I should mention that all of these productivity tools I'm going to mention, or I'm going to talk about, geez, someone should have told me that. Um, all of these, pro um, all of these uh, productivity tools I'm going to talk about are available for you right now. You don't, do not need to wait until 10.1. So the first thing you might notice is that the application user interface has been updated. And it's been updated in order to support the form factor of the iPad. So we've taken away the tabs along the bottom, and we've put the more commonly used tools in a toolbar along the top. You also have access to a legend, giving you information about the layers within your map. But this isn't just any legend. Notice that when I zoom in, my sensitive species layer will become invisible or turn off. So it's not visible in the map, and it's also removed from the legend itself. So this is especially useful if you have a lot of layers within your map. You're really only interested in the layers that you can see. And so the legend filters that out for you. You also have access to all of the layers that make up your map, and you have control over their visibility. But you don't just have control over a, a group layer or a parent layer. You have control over all sub-layers as well. So I can turn off the contours of my subsurface geology. OK, we're, gonna, we're going to turn off the subsurface geology layer altogether because this is going to help me illustrate the next productivity tool, and that is data collection. So this map is uh, actually a special map. It's a special map because it's been authored with an editable feature service. When the application uses an intelligent map authored with an editable feature service, it gives the user the ability to edit or collect data. So in this case, I'm going to specify a construction area in the field. We'll use today's date. We'll specify a contact information. And you may notice that I'm doing very little typing. So the application respects domain ranges and domain values. And so we present lists to our field workers and our users wherever possible. OK. Now I'd like to denote the area of construction. And in order to do that, I'm going to interact with the map. Of course, if I was out in the field, I'd probably use the GPS of the device. So I'm just going to interact with the map. At any time during the editing process, 
I can tap and hold to bring up the magnifier to give me more fine-grained control. Okay, that looks good. Uh, I can also um, provide attachments for this new feature. Attachments can come in the form of photos, videos I take with the device, can come in the form of PDFs or Word documents. So I'm going to add a photo. Now I have a choice between taking a picture or choosing a photo from the camera roll. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, this is not my iPad. So I'm not going to go into the pictures on this iPad because I don't know what I'm going to find. Uh, so uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, be safe and take a picture. Now Dean is hiding over there, but that's okay. We can go. Oh. Okay, it's a little dark, but that's okay. And we'll use that and we'll finish. So right now this uh, feature is being posted back to a feature service. It's being hosted in a service. Any intelligent web map that is um, authored with this service will see this, this new feature. OK. Other bits of functionality or intelligence that can be authored within the web map include pop-ups. Pop-ups define the user experience, what they're going to see when they interact with the map. So I'll go ahead and we'll tap on one of our sensitive species here. Now there's various media types in which we can author into pop-ups. Graphs, pie charts, bar charts, links, custom text. Here we have an image. We can get a big, bigger picture of the image. We can save this image and share it via email, SMS. We can get a look at the text below it as well. So that's support for pop-ups available right now. There's a lot of other productivity tools that we've put into ArcGIS running on iOS. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, leave you with the product, this last productivity tool, which is sharing. I can share this map via various social media outlets, like Facebook and Twitter. And I can also, uh, if I had, was on a phone, I could send this map or share it via SMS. We also have the option to share via email. So sharing via email is very simple. It's a matter of putting in the recipient's address and pressing send because we provide you with some default text in the email already. Within that text is a link. So someone receiving this email on an iPhone, for example, can click the link. The ArcGIS application will automatically start up and open up this intelligent map. OK, so that's some of the productivity tools available for you right now. For the next few minutes, I want to solicit some audience participation. Now, I know everybody has cell phones. Most of you probably have a tablet of some sort. I'd like to see, um, based on how loud you applaud, how many people have an iPhone? iPhone users. OK. Good. This next announcement is not for you. Sorry. How many people use an Android, will be using an Android at work, maybe your organization is thinking of integrating Android tablets or phones? Let's hear you. Applause, please. I am happy to announce, as of early this morning, ArcGIS for Android is available for all of you who just clapped in the Android market. So please uh, take some time to download it. It's available for you right now. And uh, throughout the week, I would love to hear your, your feedback on it. OK, there is one more demonstration I'd like to show you. This is a custom application running on an iPad. It was built using the ArcGIS Runtime SDK for iOS. And it's made for a worker to go out into the field and um, inspect their assets. In this particular example, uh, the worker will assess um, a tank in an oil field. Well, we all know that sometimes out in the field, we have um, very little 
or no uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, I've experienced that today, um, as a matter of fact. But we'll go into airplane mode and we'll mimic no connectivity. So we have no Wi-Fi, we have no 3G access. As a matter of fact, the application even tells us in the lower right-hand corner that we're offline. Yet we still have the ability to navigate and to interact with our data. And that's because all of this data, the high-res imagery you see there, the tanks, as well as an inspection layer, which is denoted by the, uh, by the yellow uh, square there, is all stored locally on the device. So now just because I'm offline doesn't mean that I can't get my work done. So the tanks are, uh, are symbolized in green. I'm going to tap on a tank because this happens to be an asset that I want to uh, assess. So here I have my paper form. Uh, some of you may have noticed that this application looks like a, a clipboard. And essentially it is a digital clipboard uh, because this was meant to replace a physical clipboard that workers were using out in the field. So we wanted to give them a digital one such that the transition to using uh, something like an iPad or another tablet would be easier. So I can specify the status and I will uh, put in some uh, comments here. Of course, I want to attach a photo. Um, Dean, you're safe for now. I'm not going to take a picture of you because I'm back on my iPad. So we'll choose an existing photo uh, representing the asset in which I'm inspecting. OK, so we have all the information, and now we're going to save this. Notice in the upper left-hand corner, it's tell, it tells me that I have one inspection that's ready to sync. What does that mean? Well, that means that because we're offline, that inspection is locally stored on the device. And so when we get connectivity back, let's get connectivity. When we get connectivity back, we can simply tap the text in this case, and the sync is complete. So now that inspection is being hosted in an editable feature service back in your enterprise GIS and can be used by others within your organization. So what I've showed you here for this example is a custom iOS application. This offline capability is available right now in the iOS runtime SDK. In the 10-1 timeframe, we're working very hard to have this capability available to you natively in the ArcGIS application so that no programming is required. And um, for the rest of the week, I invite you to the three mobile sessions in which we'll dive into this sample as well as others in a little bit more detail. Dean, thanks.